Alhamdulillah wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah amma ba'd assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Brothers and sisters as you know what has been going on online there is this debate challenge that was issued to us ahlu sunnah wal jamaah uh, by the Bereilviyin who claim to be Ahlu Sunnah wal Jama'ah when they have nothing to do with the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The challenge was spearheaded by the Mawlid Imam for lack of a better word. The challenge was directed at my teacher Ustad Abdurrahman Hassan. We were given two days to respond. The conditions that were laid out were any time, any place. We were told even if you want me to come to a different country, the Mawlid Imam said he would come to a different country. He said we pick the venue, we pick the time, we pick the place. He even said that he has multi-millionaires with him ready to fund whatever it is that we want to do, the debate and whatnot. Ustad Abdurrahman, he accepted the challenge uh, within 24 hours. He had no knowledge of what was taking place. And uh, what I'm going to share with you now is what really took place behind closed doors. We have recordings of phone call conversations after we realized they were recording our conversations. And we are going to bring these conversations to light where you will be able to see an inconsistency in terms of what the Mawlid Imam is saying on his Facebook, on his videos. And the inconsistency with what he's saying and what he said to us behind closed doors. Brothers and sisters, I don't have the recording of the first conversation that took place at 9 p.m. Saturday night. I don't have that for you. The reason we have the recordings of the conversations after that is because it became clear to us that this individual is number one, recording the voice of our Ustad Abdul Rahman, and also we had a very strong feeling that he would lie and deceive. And we wanted you guys to be upon clarity with regards to this Imam. So brothers and sisters, I will tell you what happened in the conversation at 9pm. And after that, I will show you the recordings. At 9pm, Ustad Abdurrahman called them to discuss the date, the time, the venue, the conditions. They said they wanted to discuss conditions that day with us pertaining to the, uh, the debate. Ustad Abdurrahman was told by this individual, I will not talk to you on the phone. I want to meet you face to face right now. I will drive from Bradford to you right now. Ustad Abdurrahman showed no desire to meet with him. But due to his consistent pressure and lack of uh, cooperation, Ustad Abdurrahman agreed and said, fine, make your way to London now. I will meet you in London now. I'm waiting for you. He told us three, four hours he would be there. Then he told us we should call him back in one hour to see where he is. Brothers and sisters, I am going to play you the recording of the conversation that took place approximately an hour after he agreed and told us that he would be leaving Bradford towards coming to London so we can discuss the terms and the conditions and you can see exactly what transpired and this is the reason why we did not go to him in Birmingham yesterday and we demanded that he come to see us in London and London alone. السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته إمام عاصم. أستاذ عبد الرحمن. نعم. What's the plan, Imam? There's two minutes left. No, it's 11:13. I said 11:15. No, you said 20 minutes. From the 53rd. Yeah, we said 11 minutes. So it's already 20 minutes, sorry. And that's the. Yeah, it's good that you rang earlier than late. Barakallah. Um, give me five. Give me five minutes. I'll give, ring me in five minutes. Imam Asim, speak to me, inshallah, Taala. Please, wallahi, it's hard because I. I wallahi, I we are coming tonight. I swear, I, wallahi, I, we are gonna come tonight. I, I know, promise you. But I know. I'm like going to tell you who is going to come exactly. I'm estimating 15 minutes. Give me 15 more minutes, and I'll see if I can get the answer. It, will be, it might be two minutes, but you ring it 15 because I'm giving you the time of 15. So, okay, if that doesn't work, do you have a contingency plan, a plan B? 
plan B, maybe tomorrow. Okay, okay. Um, but I don't think tomorrow will be because I'll give you my word of coming today. I want to come today. And if you want me today, I'm going to come today. Okay, uh, last question, inshallah ta'ala. Who are you planning to bring? Who's your people that are running your mind that you want to bring? That, that's, that's, that's not, that, that has nothing to do with you, who I bring. You said I can bring whoever I want to bring. I will tell you who you want to know. That's what you want to know. But Imam, well, ask me what Imam Asim, ask. I, Imam, I should not share my plans with you. But I, I shared my plans with you. Look, you can share what you like with me. I'm not, I'm not forced. Brothers and sisters, I want to replay to you something that he said. Notice he said, Wallahi, twice that we're coming. He said, I promised you, I gave you my word, we will come tonight. So, a man who swore by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a man who's supposed to be an imam, an imam, we expect an imam to at least stick to his word, especially when he swore by Allah, not once, but twice. And upon that said, I promised you, I told you, I'll come. I'm going to play it for you so you can hear it one more time. I, wallahi, I, 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 we are coming tonight. I swear, I, Wallahi, I, we are going to come tonight. I, I know. promise you. I, I, wallahi, I, I, we are coming tonight. I swear, I, Wallahi, I, we are going to come tonight. I, I know. promise you. I, wallahi, I, I, we are coming tonight. I swear, I, Wallahi, I, we are going to come tonight. I, I know. promise you. So, he requested that we give him more 15 minutes more. Ustad Abdul Rahman Hassan, he called him again after 15 minutes. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum Yeah, I gave you a good time now, inshallah. I'm hoping you got an answer for me, Bahar Imam. I can't hear you clearly. Uh, yeah, I said to you, I think you should, you have an answer for me by now, innit? Yes. Are you waiting for it? Yeah, I'm waiting for who's coming. Myself. Good. Mullah Zafar. Sheikh Yasin. Sheikh Israr. Four of you guys. Jameel. Okay, good. Did you hear that, brothers and sisters? This is Saturday night. Saturday night. This conversation is taking place at about 11 p.m. We have so far been told and you heard from your very own ears the speech that came out of his very own mouth. Number one, he said, Wallahi, Wallahi, I promise I gave you my word, I'm coming tonight. Number two, he said, the people that are coming with him. This was the phone call conversation. Who's coming with you now? You're, on, you're about to leave now. Who's coming with you? Who are you bringing? He, and this is after he's apparently called everyone up. Because, of course, I'm not showing you all of the lengthy conversation. Otherwise, it will become extremely long. But he had told us he's calling up everyone. And that's why he needs extra time. So he's spoken to everyone. Now he's confirming, I'm bringing myself Zulfiqar, Yasin, and Asrar Rashid. The reason why this is interesting is because yesterday a video was released by Asrar Rashid saying that he had no idea what was going on. And he had not agreed to come today. Brothers and sisters, we actually also called up Asar Rashid, Ustad Abdul Rahman, he spoke to him on the phone. And he knows that we have the recording of that phone call conversation present with us as well. We will not show you his conversation because he requested for us to speak behind closed doors. But it was very strange after he told us and he clearly indicated to us that the Mawlid Imam had lied to us about him. After that, he makes a video with the Mawlid Imam saying it was just a miscommunication. After that video, Ustad Abdul Rahman Hassan called him up again after midnight. And he said to him, I ask you, did the Mawlid Imam, did he speak to you yesterday? Did you confirm yesterday that you were coming with him last night? He said, no, he did not. He did not. And Ustad Abdul Rahman said, I have the recording to show me and prove to me as I've just showed you that this individual said that Asar Rashid was coming with him last night as you and so on and so forth so so far we have received a lie he lied about coming last night which you're going to see he didn't come and he lied about saying Asar Rashid was coming with him and then to cover up and to unite upon falsehood Asar Rashid made it seem like it was just a misconception when it was a clear-cut lie he crystal clearly told us he's on his way that's not a misconception that's not miscommunication the Mawlid Imam had not spoken to Asar Rashid that night. He was not available. He didn't speak to him that night. Yet he told us he's coming with us anyway. So, at this point, 
uh, Ustad Abdul Rahman, he explains to the Mawlid Imam, he says, since you know you have the, uh, you know, yourself and uh, Asar Rashid and you have Zulfiqar and you have Yasin, these are your Mashaykh and your all Imams of your people. He said, then he, and they have four people, he said he himself is going to bring two individuals with him. Uh, Brother Abu Taymiyyah and our Sheikh Zulfiqar from Medina. So all together there was how many? There was three people, including Ustad Abdul Rahman on his side, and four here. And that seems fair. So he said, since you have decided to bring these ulama of yours, you're going to bring four of them. I'm going to have just three people with me. And suddenly the tone of the conversation begins to change. Initially, remember the recording. I said, we challenge all of the Salafi ulama. All of the Salafi ulama. And these were just students, not even scholars. I'm bringing a, two extra people, inshallah ta'ala. Why is that? I mean, uh, me by myself, because the people I'm with right now are just general mass. They're young brothers who are students. So, for me to just be speaking to you, Zulfiqar, Asar Rashid, against be my, my, me by myself, it's not a fair... Uh, um, so, three and I have three. So, it makes it a balanced number. So, I'm bringing the following individual. I'm bringing a brother called Zulfiqar who's the, a, a master's degree, Usul al-Din in Jamia Islamiyah, Medina. Um, I'm also going to bring a brother called Abu Taymiyyah, who is a student from Damaj, Yemen. Those, those two and myself are going to be there, inshallah ta'ala. And you can bring Asar Rashid, no problem. And you can bring Zulfiqar, no problem. And even if you want to bring a fourth person of knowledge, no problem. Okay. Because you've added... That you're going to bring these now because I mentioned the name of Asrar. No, it's not Asrar. You bring Zulfiqar, who's a person of knowledge. I was already accepting that. And yourself, of course. And Asrar, of course. And Sheikh Yasin. So it's four yes. people of knowledge and I'm by myself. The best thing what we'll do is tomorrow uh, afternoon, evening time. Evening time, we will meet together, inshallah. Imam Asim, I'm waiting for you right now. I'm ready. I thought you uh, you wanted to come right now, inshallah. Brothers and sisters, this is uh, your lion who is uh, very openly told and said, you know, we will challenge all of the ulama of the, 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 the Salafi, Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah. And, Ustad Abdul, and, he, and he only felt confident to come to meet Ustad Abdul Rahman Hassan when there was four of them and one of him. But when he mentions, I'm going to have just another two students with me, who are, you know, our, our teachers, but students of the scholars, suddenly he starts to say, we'll meet with you tomorrow. I think it's best we meet with you tomorrow. You just added your own conditions on the whole, uh, the complex of it. I mentioned the name Asrar and you brought Abu Taymiyyah out. Do you know Abu Taymiyyah? Yeah, what's his speech uh, last night? You're going to bring up Utaimia and... Uh, I don't know who these are, Utaimia. Abu Taymiyyah, Akhi, uh, and, and I and my won't be speaking. If only you, God, yes. if only me and you are speaking, they won't speak, I promise you. They'll be quiet. It's just me and you talking, inshallah ta'ala. How's that? I promise they won't speak. Tomorrow, tomorrow Imam, Asim. Tea, Imam, Asim. Imam, Imam Asim. Imam Asim. Imam Asim. Imam Asim. My brothers won't speak. Zulfiqar will not speak. And my brother Abu Taymiyyah will not speak. A word will not come out of their mouth. It will just be me and you. Just me and you. I, I don't know what it is, subhanAllah. I mean, Ustad Abu Taymiyyah is a good friend of mine. And Allah is a very nice person. But suddenly he just got nervous. When Ustad Abdul Rahman mentioned I'm bringing Abu Taymiyyah, he said, you're bringing Abu Taymiyyah. Well, let's rearrange. Let's come tomorrow then. Bearing in mind, there's still going to be four of them and three of them. But as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does say, He places uh, fear in the heart of the, the enemies of this religion, you know, uh, from even a month away. So, just the name of Abu Taymiya was mentioned. And he's a very nice person, Wallahi, nothing to be scared of. But Ustad Abdul Rahman continues to reassure him, uh, they will not speak. They are just there in case you guys want to turn it into a debate. But I will be the only one speaking. They will not say a word. They're just there when Asrar opens his mouth. 
when um, when uh, Zulfiqar opens his mouth, they will speak, inshallah ta'ala. But if I'm, it's me and you, if you even want Imam Asim, you, I can speak to Asrar, me and Asrar only. Bring him, me and him will talk. These two other brothers, they will be quiet. They will not say a word. Ma you can I can bring anyone. Imam Asim, I'm, I'm making it flexible. Imam Asim, I just said it's simplistic. Me and Asrar can talk if you want. And you be quiet, Zulfiqar be quiet, and the rest be quiet. You can choose whoever you want to speak. Why are you, why are you so desperate to speak to Asrar? Um, okay, I just want to mention a few points. Nobody's uh, desperate to meet anyone. Asar Rashid is an individual who has uh, been challenging Ahl Sunnah. He's been challenging us, the Salafi Dua, to saying he's ready to debate any one of us. So our teacher was more than happy to take up that challenge. It's an opportunity. It's an opportunity to take on someone who, you know, has been so uh, boisterous in his claims against our Jama'ah. But, um, you know, that's one point. The second point that I would bring to your attention is that he had told us, Wallahi, he's going to come. And now he's clearly breaking his promise. He's breaking his promise. Why? There's the third point. Pay attention now. Because Ustad Abdul Rahman mentioned that I'm going to have two people with me, whereas you're going to have three people. And these four people are the main guys. They're the creme de la creme of the Brel Viyin in the UK. They're the main guys. Like, these three brothers here should have been a piece of cake for them. But the fourth point that I want to bring to your attention is, and that's the reason, you can clearly see, that's the reason he doesn't want to come tonight. You can clearly see, that's the reason he doesn't want to come tonight. Brothers and sisters, what was the reason he mentioned on Facebook why he doesn't want to come? I want you to listen, pay attention, okay, because you're going to see another lie uncover itself. In this audio phone call conversation, you're clearly seeing the reason he's not coming and he's breaking his qasim where he swore by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is why? Because Ustad Abdul Rahman has got two other brothers with him, whereas he would have three. Scared. Let's not be around the bush. He's scared. What did he say online? What was the reason why he didn't come? He didn't tell you brothers and sisters the reason why we didn't come last night and didn't meet last night is due to, you know, uh, the Ustad Abdul Rahman having two people while we only had three people with us. He blamed it on the weather. He said the reason I'm not coming is due to the weather. Constantly said to him, it's best that we do this in person, i rather meet you. And after reluctancy on his part, he agreed to meet myself last night. But due to unforeseen circumstances with regards to the weather and it's snowing, especially in the north of England where we live, it was difficult for us to come, especially. Wow, subhanAllah. And you know why that's a, a bold-faced lie? It's because brother Abu Taymiyyah, who he seems to be quite you know, nervous of, um, he drove through the exact same snow. He's not from London, from the Midlands. He drove through the exact same snow on that day, on that night. Brothers and sisters, Sheikh Zulfiqar was going and to his family in Leicester. He lives in Medina, his mother lives here, he hardly sees her, he was going to her. But at the request of Ustad Abdul Rahman Hassan, he rearranged with his family and he remained behind. And everyone was there waiting in the cold, in the rain, and this individual never turned up. Yesterday, as I'm going to explain, Brother Abu Taymiyyah, he came again in the exact same weather. And his car actually broke down and got stranded on the M25. And he's making you know, stories about... The weather is the reason why we couldn't come. Or well, the weather didn't stop our brothers. The reason he didn't come was because he was scared of our brothers. And this was not supposed to be a debate, just a discussion on the conditions. Keep watching, a lot more is going to become clear to you. Uh, so okay, when will you, inshallah ta'ala, um, be making your way? Tomorrow evening, 8 o'clock. Imam Asim, wallahi, you're causing a lot of headache for me now. Because wallahi, I've, I've went out of my way to do so many things for you to come. And I'm going out my way to try to get all these. But because the weather doesn't allow, you've added now two more... Imam Asim, no one's going to be talking their audience. Imam Asim, they are audience. They will not speak. Do not try to use that as an excuse. They are silent. Not a word will come out of their mouth. It's just me and you who will be talking. Okay? See that, brothers and sisters? Ustad Abdul Rahman is uh, guaranteeing him. Just me and you are going to talk. Mean you've got nothing to be afraid about. The other brothers are not going to say anything to you. Silence. But he still refused to come. And he swore by Allah. And the brothers were there waiting in the court for hours. And also I want to add on another point. Remember, anytime, any place is what we were told. Anytime, any place. And guess what? 
This isn't us stipulating the time and place. I told you earlier on the phone, Ustad Abdul Rahman just wanted to speak to him on the phone. He told us, I'm coming to you. We didn't want to see him. He said, I'm coming to you. He said, he told us we could choose a time and a place. This is him choosing it and him breaking his word. Imam Asim, Imam Asim, inshallah ta'ala, how long are you going to take? Tomorrow 8 p.m., yes or no? No, today inshallah ta'ala. Today? Right now inshallah. Tomorrow 8 p.m. Not at all, Imam Asim. I will not move from that. Not at all. Imam Asim. What's the rush? Imam Asim, why did you say, Wallahi is going to be tonight? You said that, you know, right? You said to me, Wallahi is going to be tonight. And you not, didn't say it once, you didn't say it twice, you said it more than once. Well, I know remorse, no apology. At least to say, Yes, I know, I'm sorry, I said it. I'm sorry, but you know. Well, I just. There's no indication of sincerity, no nothing. This is just a game for this person. Imam Asim, if you have any, would you call it, truth with you, at the haddak that you come tonight. If you have any truth with you. If you don't have truth with you and you believe what you're upon is not the haqq and you are scared on it, then inshallah I cannot say anything more to you other than As'alullah an yahdiyaka ila sawa'i sirat. So now you're using all these verses to convince me, except sir. Why is it that you can't just accept tomorrow at 8 o'clock we meet up? Look at the way he just disregarded the ayat of Allah. So you're using all these verses to convince me. Why can't you just meet tomorrow? The ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when they recited on you, they're supposed to have an effect on you. You're an imam. But of course the verses of Allah, we can, it's understandable they won't affect an individual when that individual, it doesn't affect him that he swears by Allah's name and he breaks it easily. I don't really believe it. I don't believe you'll come tomorrow. I don't believe you'll come after tomorrow. Lianna, so far what I've heard from you is so many things that you've lied about. And Ustad Abdul Rahman was correct because he did not come tomorrow. And I'm going to tell you, Akhi, إِنَّ الْكَذِبَ يَهْدِي إِلَى الْفُدُورِ وَإِنَّ الْفُدُورَ يَهْدِي إِلَى النَّارِ Also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, إِنَّمَا, ي... إنما يَفْتَرِ الْكَذِبَ الَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ The people who lie are not the believers. الْمُؤْمِنُ عَلَى كَلَامِهِ وَصِدْقِهِ I'm gonna just all I can say to you, Wallahi Imam Asim, ittaqillah, and ask your ulama that are they with you on this issue? That you made this promise to a person who's older than you in age. I called my wife and my family and I said, I'm not going to come right early. I'm outside in the rain, sitting in my car, talking to you, and, you're, and I'm in another area in London, waiting for you, and you say to me, You're not gonna come. You're the one who pushed me to meet you tonight. And now you're the one who's pulling out. And the laser, Nobody's pulling out. Wallahi, Why are you saying I'm pulling out? Wallahi, you're pulling out. Wa billahi, you're pulling out. Wa tallahi, you're pulling Where's out. Where's my turn of tomorrow at the same postcode? You gave me a postcode. Where's tomorrow? And you can't come there. Then what? I don't care about tomorrow. I, I, you promised me three times. You said, Wallahi, I'll come tonight. And I, I judge a man by his words. That's what I am. I'll judge a man by his words. And you don't have, you, you don't hold, a, your words don't hold any value to me anymore. Now I want you to notice a new promise was made. A new promise has just been made. I will be there tomorrow at 8 p.m. I want you to see how many times this promise was reinforced. I want you to see this is, this is what was supposed to happen yesterday. Why we were sitting in London in uh, our family house with food prepared? Because we were told you will be here at 8 p.m. He would be here at 8 p.m. It's a promise he just made now. A man never says, Wallahi, Billahi, Wallahi, 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 and then just pull back. That's not nice, Imam Asim. Do you think that's nice? Do you know the situation and circumstances? Imam Asim? In that moment, I said what I said. And now I'm telling you that tomorrow at 8 o'clock, I'll see you. I said what I said. He said, Wallahi, that's what he said. He's treating it like Wallahi means nothing to him. Uh, at that time, I said what I said. Saying, Wallah, I swear by Allah, Allah di qasim, he's saying, Allah di qasim, he's saying. Ah, oh, I said what I said. In that moment, I said what I said. Calling out our teachers, calling them out in the cold, I said what I said. In that journey, in that snow, oh, I said what I said. 
Ustad Abdul Rahman having to redo everything, or Shaykh Zul Fiqar having to call his mom and say, please, can we rearrange? Oh, in that moment I said what I said. And now I'm telling you that tomorrow at 8 o'clock I'll see you. Ah, he's reinforcing the promise. Tomorrow at 8 o'clock I'm telling you I'll see you. I'm telling you I will see you tomorrow at 8 o'clock at the very same postcode. Why is that difficult for you to digest? First of all, Say inshallah, first of all. Say inshallah ta'ala, first of all. Don't just say Allah. Good. Uh, brothers and sisters, I just want to bring something to your attention because I may forget it later. But as I'm recording this video, uh, just come to my attention. He posted a post on Facebook saying uh, anytime, any place, a lot of people have taken my statement out of context. Anytime, any place meant with regards to the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the actual debate, not discussing the conditions. But brothers and sisters, what I want to explain to you right now is that our meeting yesterday wasn't stipulated by us. The time and the place was given by him. The time, he said London, he said tonight, then he said London, he said 8 p.m. tomorrow. So he's trying, his individual is trying his best to get out of his situation. But brothers and sisters, any time, any place would mean we set the time, we set the place, he didn't show up. Brothers and sisters, he set the time, he set the place. He said 8 p.m., he said London tomorrow. Yeah, he still didn't show up. We'll continue with the phone call conversation. Ibab Asim, what else can I say to you, inshallah ta'ala? Wallahi, you've let me down, subhanAllah. Why? Why do you feel so let down for? Mm. 8 o'clock tomorrow, I'll be at Sunnah Masjid. See? 8 o'clock tomorrow, I'll be at Sunnah Masjid. He set the time, he set the place. And he still didn't show up. With Sheikh Asrar and Yasin. With Sheikh Asrar and Yasin. Yasin. So he's telling us he's going to come with them, as if to say he's already confirmed it, but we've already shown that Asar Rashid said, I had no idea of this conversation. I had no idea. I never planned this. Um, inshallah ta'ala. And from this minute onwards. I'm, I'm sure for Sheikh Asrari will come. Um, uh, inshallah ta'ala. Imam Asim. Yeah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. 8 o'clock of see inshallah. Okay, brothers and sisters, at this point, Ustad Abdul Rahman Hassan, he resolved to uh, say this person's not serious. He's shown us he can't even have a phone call. We just wanted to talk on the phone, that's it. He didn't want to talk on the phone. He said, we're going to meet in person to stipulate the conditions. He set the time, he set the place, he failed. Now he's telling us tomorrow. And we didn't believe he's going to turn up. So Ustad Abdul Rahman Hassan, he said, you know what? We're going to go to Bradford tonight. We're going to go to Bradford. So we pick up the phone call and he called and brother Mahmoud. Asalaamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Salaam. Is Imam Asim with you? No, no, he just left. Um, uh, can I speak to Zulfiqar? I'm Sheikh Zulfiqar. No, no, they've just gone. They've all gone? Yeah, they've all gone. Um, uh, no, I just wanted to tell him I'm coming to, and uh, I'm coming to uh, Bradford right now, inshallah ta'ala. Right. Yeah, if I could come to Bradford right now, I'll bring all the brothers. You, you give me about 20 minutes, I'll have to ring him then. And then you ring back on this 20, and then about 20 minutes. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, 20 minutes, okay. Uh, okay, okay, stop. So, remember, you see, the reason why they didn't want to meet us because, you know, according to what they said on Facebook was, he said, because of the weather. Well, that shouldn't be an obstacle, right? According to what he said to you guys on, online, because we're saying we're going to go through that weather. We're going to champion through that weather and we're going to come to Bradford to you. And he was the one who suggested coming, which means that it's not too late. He'd be awake at that time because at that time he would be driving on his way towards us. So if anything, it allows him to take a nap and whatnot and then for us to get there. So we actually directed the car in the direction of, uh, of Bradford and we're, we're driving now. Um, and he says to call back and we call back and we're actually told, um, yeah, come, 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 come to Bradford. Assalamu alaikum. Yeah, shake. Nah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I rang him. Okay. And he said, yeah. He said what? He said, come down. Right now. You said you're coming. Yeah, okay. Um, sh shall I make my way right now? You, you, yeah, you make your way. How do I know when I come? He, uh, he's not gonna, he's not gonna, he's not going to, um, uh, he's not gonna be there. Whether uh, you got my word or, or lie. But brother, I've been lied to for so many times. No, no, inshallah. You're coming to our uh, masjid. 
Wallahi brother, if I, if I drive for five hours or four hours to Bradford and I come there, nobody's going to meet me. I, I say Wallahi brother, what more can I say to you? You tell me what more I say, I say to you. We get another Wallahi. We're told Wallahi, come down. Wallahi, come down. We're going to have a meeting in Bradford. This is on the night, the Saturday night. Another Wallahi. Can I, can I speak to him so I, can, so I can hear from his own mouth? He's not here. I told you he went away, but he's told me to tell him to come. He'll be coming back now in about another half an hour or so. No, okay, I'll call you back in a half an hour. I need to hear it from his mouth, inshallah ta'ala. So we call back again. Yeah, go on to talk both of you. Uh, Imam Asim. Hello? Yeah, um, I, uh, I'm able to come right now. Wa alaikum as Hello, brother. Ah, yes, brother, I can hear you. <coughs> yeah, wa alaikum as brother, I can hear you. Brother, wa alaikum as Can I, I, I will come to you right now. Just literally half an hour before that, he says, yeah, come. We're, di we're driving in the direction of Bradford now. We were told Wallahi again. And again, tomorrow, 8 p.m. Tomorrow, 8 o'clock, I'm waiting for you, inshallah. Okay, salam alaikum. You heard that? Definitely, definitely. Tomorrow, 8 p.m., definitely, definitely, we're told. So Ustad Abdul Rahman, he calls up Brother Abu Taymiyyah once again. Actually, no, we, met, we went to meet with him in North London because they were there. They were in the UK. They were waiting. They had uh, arrived. And he told them, you're going to have to go back and come back in the morning once again. Come back tomorrow once again. <sighs> These are people who have work, studies, families, busy lives. Yet, everyone decided that they would come back tomorrow, inshallah ta'ala, to defend the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and discuss the conditions for this contract. So now we go into the next day. It's uh, about 2.30, 3pm, and we call them to confirm, are you definitely coming? And what I'm going to play to you is a series of recordings. One from the individual, the receptionist, giving his word, saying he's definitely coming. Uh, and then from the Mawlid Imam himself saying, I'm definitely coming. We're actually about to leave. He tells us, we're actually about to leave. We're leaving early, four or five hours early. That's what he told us. And that was the last time we spoke to him for a, a good few hours. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum Yeah, he, uh, he says 100%. Yeah, but can I hear it from himself, please? Oh, he's just gone off the line. Can you just call him so he, I can speak to him and ask him, inshallah ta'ala. Okay. Okay. Yeah. just talk to him? I'm in the toilet. 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 I'm in the he refused to give us his private number, so we refused to give him our private number. We're communicating through his receptionist, assistant, or whoever this individual is, the one who answers his public phone. We called him before, he called him back, and he said, he said, 100% we're coming today. After that, you're going to hear him himself tell Ustad Abdul Rahman, we are about to leave now. We are about to make our way four or five hours early. Wa alaikum as Abdul Rahman, how are you? I'm good. Is it Imam Asim? No. Imam, inshallah, I just wanted to verify would you be here for 8 o'clock sharp, inshallah ta'ala? We are leaving right now, so we're leaving 5 hours before, 4 hours, I think. Bis, mashallah, mashallah, that's good news, very good news. Okay, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, any updates, any, anything new that has. developed nothing new. Nothing new is developed on your side, okay. Brothers and sisters, something extremely shocking happens after. Um, Salatul Maghrib goes by, a few hours go by and we call them once again to see where they are, uh, to see how far down the road. Brothers and sisters, we call them continuously for an hour. We call on the uh, Zulfiqar Haider's number who is the teacher of the Mawlid Imam. 
we call on the brother Mahmoud's number who is the one who is the one we get through to Mawlid Imam through and they refuse to answer our phone for over an hour brother sisters over an hour goes by they do not answer the phone at this time we go on Facebook and we see that the Mawlid Imam has uploaded a video on Facebook saying the reason he's not coming is because of the snow because the weather is bad because he's received death threats in fact he didn't say because he's received death threats he just mentioned that in there I don't know why and wallahi we have no evidence of him receiving any death threats and we can't take seriously a man who's lied by the name of Allah so many times and lied and telling us he's receiving death threats if you can lie on the name of Allah you can lie about receiving death threats we on the other hand go on Facebook just type in a few things and you'll see death threats publicly made publicly people hunting down where we live wanting to find out where we live mentioning my name and there are other brothers from our team but wallahi we don't care about any of that he's using and I have not mentioned that once in any of my videos but this individual is using it to play the crowd and you can see it had nothing to do with the snow brother Abu Tamiya made it through to London in that exact same snow at the very least they could have had the decency to pick up the phone Bearing in mind that we were told the day before not to put up any more videos, not to mention what's happening behind closed doors. Yet yeah, he done that twice now. At this point in time I felt the need to make a video to tell you guys what's happening, that this individual is lying and deceiving us. And that we are going to make our way to Bradford to see him. Brothers and sisters, we said we even issued out a number, a, uh, a number for the people to call, for him to call. We said you have an hour and a half. We want to meet in Bradford before midnight. But like this, it got too much. An hour and a half went by. We finally spoke to him. Finally, finally spoke to him. Ustad Abdurrahman, as you're going to hear him say, he says to him, we are going to come to Bradford. And for some strange reason, he was insisting on us coming to Birmingham. Uh, I told you, if you come to London, I'm more than happy to meet you. We're sitting here, we're not going to move. I promise you, um, we're going to send you the... Uh... Uh, it seemed like a very cosy, cosy environment. Wallahi, and we've got everything ready for you. Sweet chili, and, you know, red pepper. Lions, uh, lions and so-called lions. I thought I'd refer to myself as a lion on his face. So. MashaAllah, prove you're a lion, inshallah, not lioness, inshallah. So make sure you come, brother. Barakallah. Yeah, the lionesses are coming. The lions are going to start here. Don't worry. Man. Okay, you, so shall I tell you the address to come to, where to come to? No, no, we're on our way to Birmingham. We'll tell you where you should come. Barakah, not this time, inshallah ta'ala. So if you're more than happy to come to London, I will send it to you right now as we speak, inshallah ta'ala. As soon as... Um, um, as I said to you... What happened to any time, any place? Say to him, what happened to any time? Wallahi, akhi, you said to me, any time, any place. I'm more than happy to... Uh, I'm telling you in Birmingham. Yeah, I... No, Barakah, Allah fiqh. Well, I don't even know. I don't believe you're in Birmingham. I don't believe you're going to go to Birmingham. I don't think you know Birmingham. You've lied twice. Do you know Birmingham? I don't. The things you're saying right now doesn't have no weight in my eyes. Asra Rashid freed himself from you. I think it's most appropriate that this matter is taken out of your hands. You seem like a fool in your group. They don't respect you. They don't have no, you don't have no weight in their eyes. So sit in your seat. Learn the uh, ibtida'iyat, the alphabets in the Arabic language and the makharij. Learn, learn how to read Surah Al-Fatiha. And inshallah, send the real people you look up to. Barakallahu feek. If you're willing to come to London, wallahi ana fil isti'dad. Your security, your food, whatever you're going to eat, I have it ready for you. I'm waiting for you in London. Even if you want me to get you a red carpet, I'm more than happy to. I will just color it red for you. Make sure you come to London. And ahtaramtuka, I respected you. Lakin la tastahiqul ahtiram. You're ahmaq, safi, that's what you are. If you want to come to me, if... أخي مثلك أنا لا أتكلم معه ولو كل كلب وعى القمت وحجر لا أصبح الصخر مثقالا بديناري أستود if you want to come to London I'm now going to text you the address if you're willing to come and we'll take it from there onwards إن شاء الله تعالى بارك الله فيك هداك الله إلى سواء السرات brothers and sisters you have to understand why we refuse to go to Birmingham there are several reasons number one it is because we don't go by the demands of the innovators. These people who lie against Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so easy, they don't force us around and push us. So far he'd been calling the shots and by him calling the shots, we had mashayikh that came from different parts of the country, different cities, two days in a row being pushed around left, right, center, one brother's car broke down. Okay, we're not going to listen to the demands of this individual anymore, number one. Number two, we didn't genuinely believe he would come to Birmingham. 
We, if, he, if he was going to come to Birmingham, why not be in London? The time he left Bradford to drive to Birmingham is the time he was supposed to be in London at that time. An individual who can't even be man enough to pick up his phone and say, guys, we're not coming, and puts videos up on Facebook, is now telling us to come to Birmingham? No, we wanted to make sure that we would see him. At least we would know if we came to his city, we'd see him. For all we knew, he could have said Birmingham and played us around again. And we genuinely did not believe he would come to Birmingham. Even though in the end he did, but brothers and sisters, look at this. And Wallahi, brothers and sisters, he had no excuse to come to London. If he's talking about death threats, we were planning to come, we were saying we're going to come to your city, we'll risk our life. He's talking about the weather, we're ready to come through the weather and come to Bradford. Yeah, he's still insisting Birmingham. Birmingham is not your city and it's not our city, it had nothing to do with us. You set the time and the date London, and you, you, you said any time, any place, you said it. You let us down, we come to your city, and you want to set time and date again. Uh, we don't listen to the call of these innovators. And we said, there were still about three hours left till midnight, two and a half hours left till midnight. And Birmingham to uh, London is only an hour and a half. Wallahi, if he was a man who was real and sincere, as you can see, brothers and sisters, up until now, we tried everything. We tried. Eventually, there's a limit, right? Eventually, there's a limit. There's a limit we're going to get fed up and give up on, right? So eventually, we had the food prepared, everything set out. Hour and a half from Birmingham to London. If he was a man of his word, he could have come to London. What's Birmingham? Why, 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 why were you so... If you've got nothing to be afraid about, if you're with the truth, why not come to London? Why not come to London? You're preventing us to come to your house in Bradford. You don't want to come to our house in London. Khair, brothers and sisters, um, that is what happened since then. A series of attempts for... Because you know a lot of the public have become aware of this person, who he is, how fake he is. Uh, the lies that and the deception that have come from him who's tried to put up some things on Facebook to kind of win the crowd back and he will continue to do so brothers and sisters we will not respond to him anymore Imam al-Shafi he said it does not befit the lion to respond to the calling of a dog and brothers and sisters we are not going to respond to him anymore he can talk and say whatever on earth it is that he likes he had the opportunity to talk to us we have uh, bigger fish to fry Asar Rashid accepted the challenge of our teacher, Ustad Abdurrahman Hassan. So now that we have the Mawlid Imam out of the way, in due time we will be in touch with Asar Rashid. As he said earlier in his video before, that Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah said that any time I debated with an ignorant person I lost, he was referring to myself being the ignorant person. That's why he said he wants to debate my teacher. And wallahi brothers and sisters, I say this with all humility, he did not once bring a single evidence uh, against my points, nor did he refute my points in any way, shape or form. He is the ignorant one who cannot tell the difference between a present tense verb and a command verb. But then we say the same to you. Wallahi, our teacher. SubhanAllah. Wasting his time talking to you. Yeah. He's wasting his time talking to you. you. Don't even deserve, Wallahi, to even look at the books of our teacher, let alone have a discussion with him. You don't even deserve to be in the presence of even one of his books, let alone talk to him. So we will talk to Asar Rashid. And they're in contact, and that's what will happen now. This person, ego and fame has got to him. I advise you, brothers and sisters, be conscious and wary of this particular individual. No more sidetracking. You wanted debate, we gave you the opportunity. All this was not for the debate, it was just to have a discussion. You didn't even want to have this discussion on the phone. It could have been on the phone. You didn't even want to have it on the phone. You're the one who made it into Let's Me Up. It could have all been done on the phone. Now, you're gone, your history, the people know who you really are, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exposed that which is within your chest. In the meantime, I will carry on refuting point by point that lecture that you did in Birmingham and the remainder of what's left with that lecture. And wallahi, we already know you don't have the answers. So it'd be best if you, if, you, if you sit down, you be quiet, and you study Islam from the beginning again. Start with the fi'l and the fa'il and the maf'ulu bi and the rest of that, inshallah ta'ala. It would seem, in conclusion, that the Bredviyin, as far as the Mawlid Imam is concerned, has run away, has lost, out of fear, he's lied, he's deceived. And if you go to the history books of how the ulama debated in the subcontinent with these people, every time the Bredviyin, they left and they ran away. Inshallah, we hope that Asar Rashid will agree to the terms and conditions set to him. 
they will be the same terms and conditions that your ancestors agreed to when they debated Sheikh Zafiyur Rahman Mubarak Furi in that debate when they lost and they ran away after three days it will be the exact same conditions your ancestors were man enough to agree to them we hope that you will also agree to them inshallah ta'ala Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah like the video share the video we'll leave the matter in the hands of the public to decide the reality of this individual